A forgotten artifact lies in pieces on a planet far from Earth. Few know it exists except those who took it back and those whose ancestors created it. Four young people are thrown into a race against emissaries of the gods to find its pieces. Mistrust, greed, and magic are tangled in an endless web. What will the fate be of the universe once it is found and reassembled? Get Scepter of the Gods, The Rod of Truth now on Amazon and get wrapped up in the saga that will not let you go. Good morning, and welcome to the Motivational Devotion, where we are merging motivation and spirituality to create a daily dose of confident positivity. I hope that this morning's podcast will help you to be more spiritually and positively motivated so that you can transform your day. Good morning, I am Mark the Writer, and I want to thank you for joining me today as we continue our series, 50 Ways to Love Your Soul. I hope you've been able to follow along with the series and are finding it helpful in getting your new year going in the direction of your lifelong goals as well as deepening your spirituality. If you know anyone who could use some encouragement in setting goals or spiritual development, please share this podcast or the blog version from motivational-devotional.com. Om Mani Padme Hum Om Mani Padme Hum Wait, 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 don't go yet. <laughs> I can't I can't say just kidding, but there is more to this. And no, that was not a joke. I was not trying to be funny. I was making a point. And if your first impression was, what the heck is this? I thought this was the motivational devotional. Then you helped me make my point. How many times have you heard or read a company's statement that such and such was their mantra or their new mantra? It's like we are now using the term in place of the word slogan. I googled the specific phrase in parentheses, it's our new mantra, and it returned over 2,000 results. One site says, these days, instead of saying practice makes perfect, we say practice makes better. It's our new mantra. Mangolanguages.com says Swedish speakers know this to simply be a case of Riesfieber, and at Mango, it's our new mantra. Covertleadership.com says Strive for imperfection. We are keeping this one every week. It's our new mantra. Wildflower Wellness Company says Look for joy. It's our new mantra and is helping us get through such an unsettling time. I think you probably get the idea by now. None of this is probably new to you. It isn't to me. We hear it all the time. But how many people really understand what a mantra is? Here's the thing that brings me to realize that I have a new lesson here in letting go attachments, because one thing that brings up a lot of agitation in me is for people to misuse a term and then share that misuse with a ton of other people as if they are all correct and instead they're like a bunch of lemmings leading each other off a cliff. Before talking about what a mantra is, let me say that what it is not is a slogan. It is not a buzz phrase, it is not a headline, and it is not a catchy thing to get all your employees to get behind. Okay? A mantra is not any of those things. So, with that said, and with me taking a deep breath to center myself, there we go, let's talk about what a mantra is. A mantra is a device. It is a phrase that one says over and over to focus on a spiritual truth. I started off this podcast with a mantra, a real mantra, and one that is probably one of the most widely used mantras. Om Mani Padme Hum is a Sanskrit phrase. Let me also say that one does not have to understand Sanskrit to be able to use the phrase effectively. I learned most of what I know about a mantra from spiritual teacher Ram Das, who taught that whoever formulated Sanskrit did so with an awareness of tonal frequencies and the phrases and sounds activate parts of the mind as well as the spirit of a person. Oh, 
Let me also assure anyone listening that a mantra is not a prayer, and so repeating a mantra is not a form of praying to some deity. As I said, it is a device. It is a phrase that is used to focus your mind, no one else's, and then to move past that to where the mantra becomes part of your being and you become attuned to a new spiritual state. One of the things Ram Dass said, and I am quoting from ramdas.org, was, The idea of a mantra is that it just sits there, and all that stuff goes by. It's like a bridge on which you stand, looking down into the water in which you see your own life going by. It's a training device to break you out of your attachments. When I'm driving and doing mantra, I'm not attached to my driving. I'm doing mantra, and driving is just happening. So, in other words, the mantra is a technique for bringing me into a place in myself which would be called the eternal present. That is, a place where nothing is literally happening at all. It's a device for calming my mind. When you do a Sanskrit mantra over and over again, it will take your consciousness to new levels. But it isn't just Sanskrit. The Taizé community in Taizé, France, is famous for formulating and practicing what they call meditative singing, which is pretty much the same thing as a mantra. A person sings the short phrase over and over and over to not only let the phrase sink in, but to allow it to become part of one's consciousness. With both Taizé as well as a mantra, if you're getting tired of singing it or chanting it and you're thinking, eh, you're maybe done enough, that's a sure sign that you haven't done it enough. Back to the mantra I began with, Om Mani Padme Hum. The meaning of Om can be expressed simply as the total expanse of divine potential. In other words, all of the potential of creative power that has not yet been manifest. Ooh, that's big. You could call it all of the possibilities at God's disposal. That's just the first word. The word Mani means crystal like a pure jewel. The word Padme means, literally, lotus flower, which is a very significant spiritual symbol in East Asia, and symbolically it refers to the person as a lotus flower because our lifelong journey is about unfolding, like the petals of a lotus flower. The word Hum means my own heart, or as used in this phrase, it means to manifest in my heart. When you put this string together, The more literal translation is that the totality of divine potential is a perfect jewel in the lotus flower of my being manifesting in my heart. Wow, while that is a very heavy concept, that's just from saying it once. The use of a mantra is all about saying it over and over again. You might meditate and say it repeatedly for 20 or 30 minutes. But then you continue to run it through your mind continuously as you go about your day. Do you know the term earworm? You know, a phrase in a song that suddenly gets stuck in your head and you can't get it out and it runs in your head all day? Well, that's where to put the mantra. Right there where that earworm would continue to play. Only you let the mantra play all day. When you go to sleep at night, if you've done this correctly all day, it will be a part of you in your sleep. Ram Dass tells the story of going to sleep and hearing a multitude of voices continuing to chant the mantra, even when he wasn't, but that was because he was tuned in. He was told that when he was tuned, <coughs> he was told that he was tuned into the place where countless spiritual beings were all hanging out. If that's way too much for you, then maybe slogan is good enough. But if that sounds really cool and you want to connect with spiritual beings and activity at a much more profound level, find a mantra that works for you and love that mantra. Love the work you do with it. Love how it connects you to new and profound ways to the universe. Om Mani Padme Hum. Om Mani Padme Hum. Om Mani Padme Hum. Over and over. Or whatever phrase works. Do it with relentless intent because the more deeply you connect with the universe, the clearer you will be on your lifelong dream, the clearer you will be on your long-term goals, and then the more fulfilling your life will be. It's simple, but not easy.
not by a long shot, but you can do it because all of creation is already conspiring in your favor. Trust that the universe always has your back. Poet Robert Browning wrote, Truth lies within ourselves. It takes no rise from outward things, whatever you may believe. There is an inmost center in us all, where truth abides in fullness, and to know rather consists in opening out a way, whence the imprisoned splendor may escape, that in effecting entry for light, supposed to be without. Thank you for taking the time to listen today. Please help keep this podcast going by following the Motivational Devotional Facebook page, following at Threefold Way Radio on Twitter, and sharing the written format of today's message from motivational-devotional.com on your social media. I am deeply grateful for your support, and thank you for letting Motivational Devotional be part of your journey. Peace out. See you tomorrow. Three Fold Way Radio, LLC.